I think I've figured something out. So for the longest time, I've been questioning the Google Pixel brand. I'm like, why do they make the decisions they do? And it's so confusing to me because I've tried the Pixel products and all of them seem to have the same problems of they're not paying attention to detail. There's no optimization on paper. They're not even that great. What is Google's angle? Well, I think I've pretty much figured it out. And I'm not trying to say in this video that it's okay now or this excuses their design choices, but though it's still fundamentally flawed, I think I get the angle angle they're going after now, so I thought I would explain my whole grand theory of the Pixel line with you today. So usually when I think of Samsung, the one word I would say that kind of describes all of their products is features. On paper, without using any of the products, I think more people would go with the Galaxy because of all the things you can get with it. You look at the price and you look at all the things they include between wireless charging, the nice display, the good cameras, the S Pen, the headphone jack, fast charger included, headphones included, all these features and that's kind of Samsung's main priority is just throwing as many features together into one product as they can and that's how they're gonna get people to buy their phones, which is a very effective method for a lot of people. A lot of people appreciate the features that Samsung implements and it works for them. It's what makes Samsung one of the best selling smartphone companies in the world. And then usually when I think of OnePlus, the big word is affordability. I really think they should drop that never settle tagline. Doesn't really fit with what they're going for. But obviously if you compare the OnePlus 6T to an iPhone XS Max or a Note 9, you'd have some noticeable downfalls. You'd be like, well, the OnePlus 6T can't do this, can't do this, but we don't compare the 6T to the Note 9 or the iPhone XS Max because it's so incredibly affordable. $550, that's the main selling point. That's the main reason people go to OnePlus is that they can get some pretty decent phones with pretty quality features and a really decent design for a really affordable price. So that's the big word. With the Pixel brand though, I've had a very hard time trying to figure out what they're advertising that's so attractive to people. We have camera that's good at stills, but now with other smartphones, catching up so well, I really don't even think that the Pixel 3 has the best smartphone camera anymore, especially considering video performance. And yes, I absolutely think video is a factor you have to consider when it comes to cameras, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I think that Google is attacking the iPhone market with the Pixel 3 in a way that no really other Androids are attempting. That's something kind of unique. So you've heard my rants, you've heard my complaints all about this phone and why I don't understand anything about it. But sometimes people will ask me, Drew, what do you like about the Pixel 3? What's something that was surprisingly good? And I always have the same answer with both the regular Pixel 3 and now the Pixel 3 XL. What I do notice, Google paid a lot of attention to and a lot of time likely went into it is how does the phone feel in the hand and how does the phone look? I know how a lot of you are like, well, people don't really care much about that. I mean, it's a little bit of a factor when buying a product is thinking about, okay, how does this feel in the hand? This feels kind of nice. And how does the phone look? Yeah, it looks kind of cool, but then we get into the features and then we get into the tech specs. I think Google is trying to go after a market that doesn't go on YouTube, that doesn't really care about features or price or things like that. They're literally just trying to hope that someone will have something go wrong with their iPhone. Something will go bad and then they'll be like, I'm fed up with Apple. I want to switch to Android. And then Google can get the Pixel into their hands as quick as possible and be like, look, it's just like an iPhone because I will admit the way it feels in the hand is a very quality build. It feels nice. It's very light. It feels very comfortable. The sides of it are very smooth and very glossy. And I would say of all the Androids I've ever held, it's the Android that feels the most like an iPhone. They pay attention a lot to the taptic feedback to try to imitate that taptic engine best they can. And they give it that iPhone feel. And because it's made by Google, a lot of people have that same mentality that, well, Apple designs iOS and the iPhone, Google designs Android in the Pixel. So these should go right together, no problem. This is basically just the Android version of an iPhone. So switch to that, right? Now, personally, I think that the Pixel phones look like absolute garbage. I don't get the whole matte slash glossy finish thing they've always had on the back, and they put a giant slab of glass on the Pixel book for some reason. But while I admit that I don't like the design of it, I do understand that Google is trying to have some type of design uniformity and noticeable ecosystem look, like all of their products have this 
this signature trademark design scheme to him with the speakers. It's making that fabric and stuff with the phones and the devices. It's making them out of premium materials, out of metal and glass, so that they look and feel kind of nice to touch. Now, this is a factor I think Apple heavily considers when designing their iPhones, but while I agree there's a fairly large number of people that will buy an iPhone based upon how it feels in the hand and how it looks, there's a lot of work that I think goes on behind the scenes that customers are enjoying, but they just don't notice it. So Apple does consider that a factor, but they also work very hard on having industry-leading CPUs on the inside that can power these phones for years. They focus on iOS updates so that when you buy an iPhone, you get five to six years of software support. They design software exclusives in iOS that cannot be rivaled to what you can get on Android, things like iMessage and AirPods support and the Apple Watch and AirDrop and things like that. So there's a lot of work Apple does behind the scenes to make sure that, yes, even people who are buying this iPhone just for the looks actually get a pleasurable experience. Now, I think that Apple has a very extensive, very long cookbook for making a successful product, and Google basically grabbed a page out of the book and is following the directions on page one of the giant recipe. Google's not doing everything that you need to do to make a product enjoyable and satisfactory to the customers, but they are getting step one of what Apple always does, which is make your device have a signature premium look, make it feel good in the hand so that the first impressions with the product are usually pretty good because when you hold it, it feels nice. And while Apple has kind of their signature trademark design schemes that you can kind of point out throughout the ecosystem, Google's trying to do something fairly similar. Now, I don't think they're doing a great job, but like I said at the beginning, I think that that is the angle they're going for. I don't think they're succeeding and the sales for the Pixel can speak to that as this phone does not sell very well at all. But if you looked on big YouTubers channels, you would assume that this is a top selling phone. It really isn't. More Apple Watches sell than this thing. This is a very low selling product, but on YouTube anyway, we make it out to be like this giant success, this major competitor. It really isn't. But what I can tell Google is trying to do is go after this market of people that literally will buy a phone based upon how it looks and how it feels in the hand. If you watch the marketing they do for here's how to switch to a Pixel 3 from an iPhone, I think it answers all of your questions. So like I have problems with Samsung's marketing because I think it's like disrespectful and, and kind of cringy. All ads are cringy in most ways, but you notice Google ads don't tell you about why you should switch to the Pixel 3 because it has a better battery or it has better performance or it has better such and such. A lot of their marketing ads are literally just time to put away that iPhone. Here's how you switch to iPhone. Make sure you turn off iMessage and plug in the phones together. Let's just get you over to Pixel, okay? Let's just move you over. It's all about that initial impression, which I agree is definitely important. And I'm not saying that just caring about the way the phone feels or looks is not a priority, but Google, you kind of have to look at the rest of the recipe cookbook that Tim Cook is cooking in the kitchen. I'm sorry, I just had to. But you have to look at the rest of the book and realize that yes, the initial impression of holding the phone and putting it in your hand for the first time is important, but there's a lot more to a successful product than that. There's things like reachability that are kind of nice on large smartphones and things like cooling of the CPU so that when the phone gets hot, you don't automatically shut down while doing very, very basic tasks. Or the fact that when you're using the phone and it's on a wireless charger, it's still able to charge the battery. There's a ton of things Google doesn't think about clearly when designing their phone, but if you look at the Pixel team's angle of just being, we need to make our products look good and feel good, and that's the main priority, that's really the only attempt they're trying to make in the market is, we want to look good and feel good in the hand, and that's why people will buy Pixel. You know, the Pixel book is so useless, there's so little software that can take advantage of any of the hardware you buy with that for $1,000 running Chrome OS. It's ridiculous, but it supports my theory when they build it out of pre materials and they use their glass slab on the top of the pixel book that serves no actual purpose but it does support their theory that hey it looks kind of cool and it feels nice therefore this must be why apple sells well right because they just build everything with nice materials that feel good in the hand there's not a ton of other companies that are only considering this definitely samsung phones they can feel good in the hand but personally i feel like they're a little bit sharp on the edges and samsung's main appeal to the galaxy devices is definitely not this feels nice this looks nice. It's mostly, look at all the things you can do. You have this feature that's better than an iPhone. You have this feature that's better than an iPhone. We can beat an iPhone in this and this and this. So they're more feature-based and it shows that that is a market success. A lot of people buy Galaxy phones. So that theory is an accurate and successful one. With Google, they're literally just saying, we don't need to out-feature them on the tech specs. We don't need to have a better phone overall for the price. We just need to look good and feel nice in the 
the hand. And to me, that explains so much of the Pixel team's design scheme is we gotta price it like an iPhone. So when people go to a Best Buy or a, I was gonna say Google store, but they don't really have a lot of Google stores. Anyway, when you first try the Pixel phone, you just go, huh, this feels nice. And it's $800, $900, so it's priced like an iPhone. It must be very expensive. It must be good. In other words, they're trying to capitalize on people who don't do their research about their products, which is not a very successful trend as we've seen the sales of this thing not be very good. So once again, not saying that this is a good method of success or that this is a good way of developing a product, but it's what the Pixel brand does and it explains so much of their design. And now I'm curious what you guys think. Do you think I'm right? Do you think this is how Google designs their products from the Pixel team? It's not like Nexus days where they thought, let's just make a good phone that's affordable. That's more of what OnePlus does now, but the Pixel team is just trying to be premium and not really thinking any more of it, or am I completely wrong? And they actually do care about the user experience and I'm just being too hard on it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And also the reason I say they're not doing a great job at their own ideology is that if you wanted the phone to look good and feel nice in the hand, you shouldn't have put that thing on there. That looks so dumb. Thank you guys for watching. This is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one.